How do you know when the bale is full? What you don't want to do is to open the bale or door to find out. Once the door is open, the plastic expands and the door cannot be shut again. But if a mistake is made and the door is open before the bale is full, empty the compaction chamber and start again. What you do want to do is watch for the following signals. As the bale fills and the plunger encounters more resistance, the engine begins to work harder and winds at a lower pitch. It may sound as though the machine is bogging down, but it's not. It's just starting to work harder. An increase in hydraulic pressure is another signal that the bale is close to full. At about 800 pounds per square inch pressure, the hydraulic pump goes into low gear and the plunger moves more slowly, but with more power. The pump sounds different when it's in low gear. However, low gear does not mean that the bale is close to full. It's likely that several compression cycles with pressures between 800 and 2500 psi will be needed before the bale is complete. But when the full 2500 PSI is needed to compress the load, then the bale is close to full. Note that if the lever is kept in the down position after the ears have sprung into place, pressure will continue to rise to 2500 PSI and beyond. Don't let this happen. Release the lever as soon as the plastic is compressed. During the initial compressions, the hydraulic piston rods will bottom out when the plunger is lowered as far as it can go. But when the bale is close to full, the rods will no longer be able to bottom out. Two to three inches of the shiny metal of the rods will still be visible when the plunger is lowered as far as possible. This is a key signal that the bale is almost full. Keep loading and compressing until the two to three inches of shiny metal are visible and the hydraulic pressure needed to make the compression approaches 2500 PSI. Allow the pressure to go this high, but no higher. To recap, the bale is close to full when the engine is working hard. When 2500 psi of hydraulic pressure is needed for the compression, and when 2 to 3 inches of shiny metal remain visible after the plunger is lowered as far as it can go. Depending on the type of plastic being baled, the weight of a full bale will differ somewhat, but aim for 1000 pounds. Bales that are too big or heavier than 1200 pounds can be difficult to eject and could break the ejection feet or shaft. However, as already been mentioned, small bales can cause problems, and they are difficult to market. If there isn't enough plastic to make a full bale, leave it for the next collection or combine it with the same type of plastic from another farm. Rigid plastic will not compact as tightly as film, so keep in mind that full bales of products such as nursery pots, planting trays, irrigation tubing, and maple tubing will be considerably lighter than a thousand pounds. It may be more efficient to stack loads of these plastics on pallets or in Gaylord boxes rather than bailing them for shipment to recycling markets. Confer with wrap staff to determine the best approach. When the bale is just about full, raise the plunger and look inside the compaction chamber. If the center is higher than the rest, square the bale by adding plastic to the corners along the front and back edges. While the plunger is still in its up position, lay a flat sheet of white plastic on top as the final piece covering the bale. As we've mentioned before, the flat top and bottom sheets can create a surface that can shed water, prevent small pieces of plastic from clogging the wire channels, and provide an area for writing the information needed to label and track the bale. Now it's time to lower the plunger for the final compression. By this point, the crew may be getting so comfortable with the process and eager to see the full bale that they need a stronger reminder to stay back. The operator is responsible for making sure they do. After lowering the plunger for the final compression, keep it in the fully down position. With the engine running and the plunger down, use the middle hydraulic control lever to unlock the three door latches and open the baler door. The control lever that opens the door also retracts the set of ears in the baler wall. If the door sticks and doesn't open when the latches are unlocked, use a J-bar to pry the door open. Stand cautiously to the side, clear of the door, to avoid possible injury when the door swings free. No one other than the person working with the J-bar should be in the vicinity of the door. After the door is opened, turn off the engine while tying the bale wires. 
Each bale is tied with five strands of 12-gauge, 14-foot galvanized wire with a loop on one end. The wire typically comes in bundles of 125 strands. A full bundle of bale wire fits in the wire rack to the left of the bale or door. Check that there is an adequate supply of wire in the rack before taking the baler on the road. Tying off the bale is most effectively and safely done with two people, and only two people, working together, one in the front of the open door of the compaction chamber, and the other on the opposite side near the engine. The two need to communicate clearly, so it's important to have the engine off, so they can hear one another. To protect eyes from the sharp end of the wires, RAP staff recommends wearing eye protection. Gloved hands and vice grips are also recommended. Staying alert and in good communication is critical. Having more than two people involved in the wire tying operation can be more chaotic than useful. The operator must keep everyone else away while the wires are threaded and tied. Here's how it's done. The person standing by the open door of the compaction chamber removes five strands of wire from the wire rack and lays them on the ground within easy reach. This person threads the pointed end of each wire through the wire channels at the base of the baler chamber. To reduce risk of poking, RAP staff recommend threading all five wires to the base of the baler before the second person moves into position on the trailer bed near the engine. Once the wires are threaded through the bottom channels, the person on the other side of the baler near the engine pulls the wires through until about eight inches of the looped end of the wire remains on the other side. A 90 degree bend about 8 inches from the looped end will prevent this end from slipping through the wire guide channel as the wire is pulled. The person near the engine then feeds the wires back through the wire guide channels in the plunger platform. If plastic is blocking the wire channels, use a screwdriver to clear the channel or cut it away. Before applying any force to push the wires through, the people on either side of the bale must communicate clearly and be alert to the whereabouts of the other. Once all five wires are threaded through the upper wire channels back to the exposed side of the bale, the pointed end of each wire is put through its looped end. The wire tip should be bent back to reduce chance of poking during the tying operation. Use vice grips and gloved hands to pull up on the loose end of the wire. Pull enough to take up the slack, but the wire doesn't need to be exceptionally tight. Make a sharp bend in the wire at the loop. If the bend is not sharp, the wire tie will not remain tight. Secure the wires by twisting the non-looped end around the tie for two revolutions. Be sure the loose ends are not poking out of the bale. The wire will tighten when the plunger is raised and the plastic expands. The sharp, crisp bend and the two twists are sufficient to hold the tie. Do not knot the wire. To eject the bale, turn the engine on again. Position the throttle in the mid-range between the turtle and rabbit symbols. Check that the ears in the back wall of the baling chamber are retracted and that the plunger is all the way up. If either the plunger or the ears are in the way, the ejection feet will not be able to kick out the bale and, more of a problem, the force can break the ejection feet or shear the shaft holding the feet. The bale may roll when it is ejected, so be sure the area in front of the baler door is clear. Pull up on the eject control lever to raise the four ejection feet at the base of the compaction chamber. This should kick out the finished bale of plastic. Immediately after ejecting the bale, push down on the lever to retract the feet so they are again flush with the floor of the compaction chamber. Eject the finished bale onto a pallet or onto a sheet of plastic laying on the ground. The point is to keep finished bales away from mud and gravel. Then move the bale out of the way with a forklift or a bucket of a skid steer. Once the bale is ejected and the feet are retracted, turn off the engine and jiggle the control levers to release pent-up hydraulic pressure. Releasing the pressure reduces wear and tear on the hydraulic system. Sometimes finished bales jam in the compaction chamber and the ejection feet don't have enough oomph to push them out. When this happens, try to work the bale out by subsequently using the ejection feet to push the bale up, then lower the feet and use the compression ram to push the bale back to the floor of the chamber. Raise the compression ram and repeat this cycle several times until the bale ejects properly. Labeling is the final step before moving the bale to its storage location. The reason for the label is to know what is in the bale and where the material came from. Include 
name of the farm or producer, city and state where the plastic was used. What's in the bale? In other words, is it bale wrap, bunker silage cover, horticultural mulch film, combination or whatever? The date the bale was made and the bale weight if it's known. Write two labels on two different faces of the bale in case one gets covered or is worn off. Use a permanent waterproof marker and write the label off center in a corner of the white plastic sheet covering the bale or on a waterproof tag that gets attached to a tie wire. The reason for writing the label off center is that if the bale becomes rounded, the center surface will rub against other surfaces and a label there may become unreadable. Brush or hose out the compaction chamber to remove organic debris, soil, and loose bits of plastic. Pay particular attention to clearing the wire guide channels. If another bale is to be made in the same location, repeat the steps we've covered already. Begin by checking that the ejection feet are fully retracted. Then lay a flat sheet of plastic on the bottom of the chamber before turning on the engine to latch the door and load the baler again. If the baler will be moved to a different location, follow the steps shown in the next section for transporting the baler. Especially if the baler won't be used again for a while, wash it down to remove debris and corrosive materials such as road salt and silage juice.